Before I get into the video guys, smash that like button, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already because it definitely helps the channel grow and it definitely helps more USMNT fans find this channel and help more fans of soccer convert to US soccer. That's the goal. So smash that like button. So as we're speaking, the transfer window is currently not open, but that's not going to stop people from talking and creating rumors or potential rumors spiraling up, coming up about potential players moving to a, a new team. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about Daryl DK, a player that's pretty damn uh, familiar with making the move abroad, going to Europe, going to England, as he did go to Barnsley. He, had, he was on a loan and did pretty damn good. We'll get into the facts and stats in a bit. But now he's actually uh, being pinned as uh, making a move again potentially in January. Now, this time it's not going to be Barnsley. This time, uh, actually Patrick Vieira. Yes, the great Patrick Vieira, the great Frenchman, great soccer player he was, in my opinion. Him and uh, Crystal Palace are definitely interested in bringing in another striker to pair him up with Christian Benteke and I think uh, Ayew, I think he's a Ghanaian uh, soccer player as well. So they're looking to bring him in and we're going to break it all down and uh, we're going to tell you why we think it's a good move and why it might not happen. So let's get into it. Last season, Daryl DK went out on loan to Barnsley, a championship side, and had a fantastic showing over there. Had 22 appearances, I believe, and nine goals. So went out there and, and the kid proved himself, said, hey, I can I can hold it down here, man. I know English soccer is physical, it's tough, but you know, I could definitely hold it out and hold it down out here. And that's exactly what he did. So that's why it doesn't surprise me that a team like Crystal Palace, who's definitely needing a striker, is coming after Daryl DK. He's only 21, oh, 21 years old, looking still to develop and potentially could be a solid, solid soccer player if he does go to the right team, the correct system, and a coach that definitely believes in him. In my opinion, this would be a fantastic move for Daryl DK. Has already proven that he can definitely hold it down and definitely contribute and be successful and obviously help a team out and, and win, right? Score goals. We've seen that. Now... We're looking at a team that's a little bit higher in profile, led by a solid coach who was a great soccer player himself back in the day, Patrick Vieira, coming after DK. I think this would be a great move for him. Crystal Palace, they don't really have solid strikers there. Like I mentioned earlier, they have the Ayewu kid who's Ghanaian. He's pretty damn good. He's fast. He's he's a flair, in my opinion. And then they also have that big, strong forward in Christian Benteke, that Belgian striker, who, in my opinion, was supposed to be a pretty damn good striker. Never really panned out, never really developed. Now they're coming to look at to bring in a, in a Daryl DK to potentially add some more competition for those two guys to see who could be a, a solid primary striker for that team, for Crystal Palace moving forward. Now, the only problem is, guys is that Orlando definitely has a big, big price tag on Daryl DK. They basically don't want to allow this kid to, to leave for a bag of chips and a soda. They want a team to come in and, and, and back up the dump truck of money and say, hey, we want this kid. Here's 18 million euros for him. <laughs> 18 million euros that translates into $21 million American. In my opinion, that's absurd. I understand DK is 21 years old, is young, is still developing, and has showed that uh, has that goal in him and could potentially be a, a workhorse for you at the striker position. But let's be honest, he is not worth 18 million euros, not worth $21 million American. That's coming from me from a U.S. soccer fan. Yes, he's been successful with uh, Orlando City. He's been successful at Barnsley, obviously. He had his opportunity to show off and showcase his skill, what he could do, what he could be. In the Gold Cup for Berhalter, never really did much. That could be concerning for a Crystal Palace. I've heard also rumors uh, that Crystal Palace is not going to pay that much money for a Daryl DK. I think... I think Orlando is definitely doing a Daryl DK an injustice here. I understand he's good here. He's great at Orlando, but he's only going to max out here. He's not going to get that European training here, right? We know that, uh, you know, training in Europe is probably a little bit better than it is here. Not bashing on the MLS, obviously, but let's be honest. It is. To be 21 and for your team to hold that big high, high price tag that a team probably won't pay for you because you technically aren't truly yet a proven commodity to a certain extent. Yes, you've score goals in Europe, but you're not, you're not, you haven't proven that you could be that workhorse yet. You have all the skill sets, but you haven't, you haven't proven it. So it's going to be very hard for, for a European team to come and pay that much money, 18 million euros for a Daryl DK, unless they're truly in love with him. But I don't see that happening. I think Patrick Vera definitely likes Daryl DK and wants to bring him in hands down. But I, I don't think that Crystal Palace is going to pay that much money for him. And that's, that's the sad part. Vieira has said that he wants to bring him in as a rotational player, kind of. And obviously, you're not going to pay 18 million euros for a rotational player. What if he doesn't pan out? You know, what if you pay that much and he's just, uh, well, hey, he's a dud. 
Not saying that that's what DK is, but th that could be a possibility. I think the fact that Orlando hasn't allowed this kid to leave already is beyond me. I understand they're probably trying to build him up, maybe have him score more goals and become a more of a proven commodity and sell him maybe when he's 23, 24 for a bigger price tag. But what if it doesn't happen? You know, what if he flares out and, and you don't get none? You get maybe less. I think right now is a perfect time to allow this kid in January to allow this kid to go try greener pastures, different type of, of soccer, a different flavor of soccer to expand his, his, his development, to get a little bit better. So right now, I'm actually going to break down a couple players, two players that made the move recently from the MLS to Europe. I'm going to talk about their price tag, and I'm going to show you guys why I think Orlando is definitely nuts. First, we're going to be talking about Brandon Aronson, who obviously made the move from the MLS to Salzburg. He made it on a $6 million price tag, I believe. And in my opinion, has been more productive than Daryl DK. Way more productive at Salzburg. More of a proven commodity. So yeah, recently have Josh Sargent who made the move from Werder Bremen to Norwich City on a price tag of 11 million euros. Yeah, that's Josh Sargent, who once again is a more of a proven commodity, has been called up way more times to the USMNT to represent the US than Daryl DK. So why would Orlando even be asking for an $18 million price tag is beyond me, but that's how I, the, they run things down there in Florida. Allow this kid to go. I wouldn't be against this move to, to, to Crystal Palace. Like I said, he can definitely go in there and carve out a role immediately if if a Yewe ain't stepping up or a Benteke ain't stepping up. So, and Vieira's definitely said that he's interested in him. So why not allow the kid to go, but on a cheaper tag. But what do you guys think? Uh, what do you guys think that uh, Daryl DK should do? Crystal Palace is interested, but they're kind of timid in offering that much money, 18 million euros for a player that might potentially just be a rotational player. Let me know what your thoughts are. Until next time, guys.